Warwick's Food Showcase, a talk on fall tourism. All that and more on this installment of In the Valley. Hi and welcome to this first edition of In the Valley of this 2019-2020 school year. I'm your host, Henry Prevost. In the Valley is your look into the Warwick Valley community and the people who help us come together. Now, in a world of purely mediocre restaurants, Warwick truly stands out as a beacon of hope for good food, as shown in the Chamber of Commerce's Taste of Warwick event. On Tuesday, September 10th, the Warwick Chamber of Commerce held its annual Taste of Warwick event. The event is held at the Warwick Winery and Distillery, boasting four hours of fun with plenty of food, drinks, and music. For its 25th year, the event had record-breaking attendance with over 300 attendees and over 30 vendors. Local business owners came to the event to advertise their food, bake goods, or drinks and gain a personal connection with their customers. The event showed off the diverse food selection of Warwick Valley, being advertised in Brooklyn and Manhattan to draw tourism. At the event, we were able to speak with Michael Jondro, the executive director of the Warwick Chamber of Commerce. Food is the strength of the Warwick Valley. We have, like, within the village of Warwick alone, there's 40 places you can buy food, from five star down to a little cafe. Within 10 miles, there's another 110 places to buy food. Instead of putting an ad in the paper, um, I think it's beneficial to make the food that we make and actually sample it out. And I think it's a, it's a much richer experience than just like an ad in the paper. And I think that the one-on-one -on -one personal time with customers and pre customers that we already have and new customers is very important. That connection that you make like on a one-on-one -on -one when you first meet somebody and they try your food. It would be hard to pick one taste to describe Warwick, but I think we can all agree it's certainly delicious. Hopefully this event continues to grow even more next year, and for more information you can visit the Chamber of Commerce's website. Don't go far. Pretty Crossroads. Hey Dad. Hey Dad. We have a gun. Why do you ask that, kiddo? Welcome to the first edition of Community Crossroads for the 2019 to 2020 school year. I'm Drew Carballo, your host for this new edition of Community Crossroads. Community Crossroads can be found each month in Warwick Valley Television in the Valley. You can find us online by subscribing to Warwick Valley Television on YouTube. In addition to the Valley, you'll find Overtime, Wildcat News, and Short Stack. Joining me today is the Executive Director of the Warwick Valley Chamber of Commerce, Michael Jondro. Welcome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Well, with the first, with the with autumn in, for, in full swing, has the chamber been doing anything to promote fall and uh, tourism and work? Oh yes, yes. We are a four season destination, Julius. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, fall, the leaves turning and all is fantastic. The apple picking is, you know, we have six orchards, and they are so busy with rides around, you know, and and all kinds of food and. And it's just, it's just fun, and, and there's so much here. The weather's been great. The fall has actually made up for the lousy summer that we had due to all the rain and the hot weather. And, uh, but I think it's, it, yes, there is a lot here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are some of the orchards, uh, the names of some of the orchards that you have? Well, you've got Pennings, mm -hmm. you've got At Ox and Maskers, and oh my gosh, what are the other three? I gotta think. You got me on that one, right off the top <laughs> of my head, but it's on our, on our website, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. 
And uh, they, they really work hard though at, uh, and this has been a good year for apples because I know Steve Pennings told me that every other year the apples are not always the same size. They'll be one year, they'll be small, and then the next year they're full and, and it alternates. But I think this has been like two years in a row, it's been really good. Okay, okay. How does the fall season tourism benefit the people who work? Well, tourism, a lot of folks, you know, natives of Warwick probably would prefer not to have as much traffic, to be honest. But with the apple picking and the orchards and so on, um, tourism is huge in the sense that, yes, tourism helps mainly your, your main street businesses. Uh, obviously, all of your restaurants, we are really strong in food in our area. In fact, uh, there are 40 places to eat within the village of Warwick alone. Mm. There's another uh, 100 within 10 miles. So we advertise down in the five boroughs of the city, uh, Edible Brooklyn, Edible Manhattan, you know, come for the day, come for the weekend. Okay, so restaurants, Main Street business, and of course lodging. Now, once those businesses are successful, all the employees within that now have the money to spend in all the businesses that aren't directly impacted by tourism. So yeah, tourism is a big part of, we're so close to New York City, how could we not take advantage of it? And with the number seven drive-in movie theater in the whole country, and there's only like 350 left in the country, and there was 5,000 uh, like about uh, five years ago. And the biggest reason for the change is that the film industry forced all of these drive-ins to go from projectors and film to digital. Mm. It's a $100,000 upgrade in equipment for each screen. And as you know, here in Warwick, we have three screens. So, I mean, you know, we have the number two ice cream shop in the nation, according to TripAdvisor at Belleville Farms Creamery. So, I mean, we've got so many things here to offer that, yeah, tourism is huge. It benefits everybody. And uh, what upcoming events should the people who are be looking forward to? Well, gosh, this is a year-round place. Uh, like I said, tourism uh, brings them here for the fall. You've got beautiful Greenwood Lake, which they can see. You've got the black dirt region of Pine, uh, Pine Island. Um, uh, basically, though, in the fall, the Merchant Guild in the village of Warwick uh, has a thing called Home for the Holidays. And they decorate all their windows and everything, you know, for the season. And they offer free horse and wagon rides around the village. And uh, it's probably the big draw for the month of December, I would guess. Uh, but in addition to that, you've just got, you've got a very walkable village. Warwick is one of those really unique villages where it's very historic. There's like, I believe, 12 historic buildings within the village area. You've got uh, some great shops. You've got a nice mix, like I said, of food and retail. And then you've got so much so surrounding us as well. You've got, you know, Greenwood Lake, a uh, beautiful lake and, and, a, and a cute village. And you've got Florida, well, one of the oldest hardware stores in the country. And you've got, uh, you know, uh, restaurants in there that are really starting to take off. And, and uh, a lot of people are, are really surprised about Warwick. When they first come to Warwick, they think, here's this, this little village, you know, of about, what, six, 7,000 people. And they can't imagine how the businesses are so strong. What they don't know is that just outside the village, there are housing developments that you don't see when you first drive in. And, and what I share with them, I said, well, there's about 3,600 kids in the school system. And they go, w why? <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot more people. The, the township of Warwick itself, I think, is around 32,000. And that includes Florida, though, and, and Greenwood Lake as well. So, yeah, there's a lot here. Okay, what would you say, what role would you say the smaller events in the chamber holds play in the community work? Okay, well, first of all, a, a chamber of commerce is so different than the, what they were years ago. They used to be like just for the size of a village where our chamber goes from roughly Middletown to Ringwood, New Jersey, and we have about 550 members. So, uh, what do we offer? Basically, our website, I have tremendous staff in our little railroad car caboose. You ever been in our office downtown on South Street? I have not. No. Okay, <laughs> well, it's uh, 40 years old. The caboose itself is actually 100 years old, but we, it's been in office for 40. But these gals are very good with the social media stuff and webs, you know, Facebook and so on, plus developing our website to the point where we're getting 8,000 hits a month. 8,000 just on our directory. And that's worth the dues are like $200 a year, so it, it's, a, it's a bargain. In addition to that though, we offer networking events. Every month we offer two events. We'll offer a free breakfast, well it's not a full breakfast, but you know, bagels and donuts and coffee. 
free. That's usually or a lunch or a dinner, early part of the month. And then toward the end of the month, we'll do like what we call an after hour mixer. And that runs about, well, anywhere from 50 to 100 people. And it's like $10 to get in the door. Now, what's the advantage of networking? Here. To me, advertising is expensive. But face to face is the best, like what we're doing right now, is the best advertising there is. Hmm. Because I try to tell all my members to sell yourself first as a nice person, okay? Yeah. Then sell your business second. And you, you, like you and I may never use each other for whatever business we're in, but if you like me or I like you, I'm gonna recommend you to other people. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, And what would you say your favorite event is to organize a run? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, because we enjoy, we have what we call community showcase. We sponsor all the Merchant Guild things. We have the Taste of Warwick, where we had 340 people this year out at the Warwick Valley Winery. We're promoting the restaurant. But our probably best would be our annual dinner. And this year, we're celebrating 80 years as a Chamber of Commerce. We're one of the oldest ones around. And uh, we give out awards for like renovation awards or helping in the community or volunteer of the year or most important person type thing, you know, most valuable person, I guess, is better. And uh, so that's fun. It's just kind of a celebration of the year and uh, people all get together and, and uh, yeah, we have uh, Lisa Jones's band's gonna play and uh, if you like to dance, wow, it's gonna be fun, so. Well, I understand that the Chamber is celebrating its 80th year, like you yes. said. Yes, yes. And uh, what's it like being part of such a long-running organization? It's really neat. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm thrilled to be the executive director in the sense that I, I'm a retired educator and uh, tried retirement and failed. And uh, this chamber job opened up and I jumped at it and uh, it's just working with people and I don't wanna see any empty storefronts in our villages. I wanna see us stay strong. And I'm not saying that I'm looking for giant growth for Warwick, believe me, that is not our intention. We wanna keep what's here strong. And uh, you have to have a little bit of growth, okay? Uh, but very, uh, you know, we're keeping the box stores away from us. We want to keep the small village uh, concept right there and keep it strong. Do you think Warwick is growing at a rapid pace? No, 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 no. I think it's growing in popularity mm -hmm. and identification that people are coming to visit us and taking advantage of the restaurants and the beauty of our region and so on. But no, we're not, we're not looking for growth. We're looking just to stay strong with what we have and, and a quality. I think quality is more important than numbers. So uh, I think we want to keep with that. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank today's guest, Michael Jondro, for being with us on this edition of Community Crossroads. A special thanks to our viewer for joining us as well. Remember to like and subscribe to War Valley Television on YouTube. For Community Crossroads, I'm Luis Carballo. Catch you next time. Seatbelt? Uh, no. Kim, you know that people not wearing a seatbelt are 30 times more likely to be ejected from the vehicle. Airbags are useless unless you're wearing your seatbelt. Okay, okay, guys, I'll wear my seatbelt from now on. For more information on seatbelt and car safety, visit www.safercar.gov. Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. Show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice so everyone knows exactly what to do. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family. Welcome back. Recently, a group of world-renowned celebrities visited Warwick for this year's annual Fireman's Parade. Let's take a closer look. This is Parker A. Stone with WVTV. I'm here at the 150th annual Orange County Volunteer Firemen's Parade, where they're being joined by the iconic Budweiser Clydesdales. So uh, what made you come to Warwick, Lane? Oh, so the local distributor wanted us to come here, uh, doing several events here, along with today with the uh, Firemen's Parade. Everybody sees us on TV, uh, they don't really see us in person, so it's kind of a 
cool thing for them to see us. Um, they're a different breed of horse. You know, they have the white feathers on their legs. Uh, they're bigger than the larger horse. And so it's just, it's really cool for everybody to come see them. We travel about 300, 320 days out of the year. Uh, we go around all over the East Coast. We're based on New Hampshire, so we stay on this side of the country. And we do anything from parades, fairs, festivals, uh, sporting events, you name it, we're there. Uh, we're overjoyed with having them celebrate our 150th anniversary. About six years ago, I started writing letters to Budweiser Clydesdale, Anheuser-Busch, and Dana Distributors to get the Clydesdales to come to our 150th. That was the pre-plan from six years ago. Such rich history visiting Warwick in horse form. That's all we have for this edition of In the Valley. If you want to see more content from Warwick Valley Television, you can find us on YouTube. Check out our other shows, Wildcat News, Overtime, and Short Stack. This has been Henry Prevost. Stay classy, Warwick Valley. talking at the top of his lungs. Oh man, oh, I totally forgot. Hold on, let me get this for you. So I thought, all right, we're definitely gonna be friends. Oh, Dapper Leon. Oh no. <laughs> He's the highlight of my week. He's always gregarious at the door. Dana, you know, like it's a surprise. I've known Mikhail and Jero about six months. You don't find many young people that wanna be fooling around with us old folks. <laughs> I come to the door, drop the food in the fridge, and the coffee is on. The things that can get you down, he's always like, well, that's how it goes. He gave me some marriage advice right when I got engaged. No. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. She came in and she said, nobody else knows this but you. We're going to have a baby. And I thought, oh my gosh. Despite his vision not being so good, he sees who I am. He helps put me back in perspective. And then I just feel better. I said, you guys have no idea how I really feel, truly feel about you. Doing Meals on Wheels for me is the joy that I look for at the end of my week. I don't feel like I'm volunteering when I'm with Leon. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America! 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 Let's do lunch!